Hello there, it is Believe in Bruce, the channel where we help you get inside your own head so you can think, feel and act that little bit better. Yes, we look at mental health, yes, we look at well-being, but also what we do is we look into the heads of celebrities, sports stars and athletes to see if we can learn anything from them. And it is fight week. Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz. Again, I'm going to rewind that because he deserves it. Andy Ruiz versus Anthony Joshua. So... The final press conference has just occurred. The two of them have done their final obligatory type, you know, face the press and give them the answers that they want to do and talk about it. And Eddie Hearn's trying to bump it up as much as he can and it's all good and everybody loves the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. But it's the body language that we're interested in. What can we learn from the body language? What are those unsaid clues that although the verbal language may not be given away, what is their body doing? What can we learn from those little secret tips and actions? But before we do that, if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe below, give me a thumbs up, but most of all, leave your comments below. I love having the cracking banter below. Whether you agree with this, whether you disagree with this, it's all welcome here, brothers and sisters. So remember the context. The context is absolutely key, especially when it comes to body language, that non-verbal communication. What we are looking for is what has happened emotionally and is it expected within that situation or is it not? We're also looking for that baseline. It's a press conference, that's the situation. Over the 20 minutes that were there, they displayed a normal baseline. We're looking for anything above, anything below. Do they do something less than usual? Do they do something more than usual? Does their body not line up with what their words are saying? Is that congruence not there? Is the synchrony not there? Let's have a look further. Remember when it comes to body language, there's some general things that everybody does across the globe. Or you know, everybody's a big statement, but a lot of the population do. Such as when somebody doesn't know something, they'll go, oh, I don't know. Especially if you've done something incorrect or something wrong, or you know you're gonna get wrong for it, a bollocking. Yeah, it's, oh, I don't know, and you'll show your palms, you'll show your shoulders, your head will come down. You've got that sort of what's called the turtle effect, the tortoise. Yeah, comes up, you try to protect your neck. That's what we call generic body language. It, you know, it's applicable to a lot of people. But then you get a thing called idiosyncratic body language that's specifically for that individual. Specifically for those individuals, so that's what I'm looking for. What are the general signs that are there? And yes, I'm excited, I'm a boxing fan. Saturday night cannot go quick enough for me. So we're looking for the general stuff that everybody does that I could actually explain to you. But also, what is unique to the boxers that they are giving off? So let's get straight in with it here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show a little clip of Anthony Joshua uh, and see what you can see. Really happy, we're confident, the whole team's confident. It's a totally different mood going into this fight than it was back in New York. And um, I think he's going to see the real Anthony Joshua on the 7th for sure. Obviously, this what he's saying there is you're going to see the best version of Anthony Joshua. He makes some comparisons before this, that little section that I've told you there about he's in a better place mentally, this is where we want him to be, they both had 12 weeks to prepare for the fight. Fantastic. But then when he says this is the best version that you're going to see, remember we're looking for that baseline, what you'll see is Anthony Joshua do this. It's that big intake of air. That big intake of air. So in his head, he's playing a story. He's seeing the fight happening. By him doing that, yeah, he's actually in his head at that particular moment. He's priming his body for action. Okay, so that inhalation, and again, it's a general thing across the population. On a global, it's, it's applicably globally, is that I breathe it in, woof, I'm, I'm filling the fuel. I'm getting the fire ready. I am preparing for action. That's what we're seeing with Anthony Joshua right there. I've got to show you a little clip here that's talking about um, Andy Ruiz and the sparring partners. Have a look, see what you see. Say that uh, we've had a great camp. We had the perfect sparring partners, uh, uh, the perfect time. The per so I'm going to play that back, but what I want you to do is have a look. Now, this is called self-soothing. I mentioned this in one of my previous videos. Now, the trainer's talking about that he's had the perfect sparring partners, but what I want you to do is watch what Andy Ruiz does with his tongue on the inside of his cheeks. Uh, uh, the perfect time, the perfect... Did you see that? So when he talks about the sparring partners, remember a baseline, Andy Ruiz hasn't licked the inside of his cheek. There's no need for him to lick the inside of his cheek. And remember the body language, it's that particular point. When they or somebody else says something, what does that body do right then? He could lick his cheek, you know, five, ten seconds later on, but that, you know, that wouldn't be important. The point is, is that when he mentions the sparring partners, for some reason, he licks the inside, he licks the inside of his cheek, which is self-soothing. Sparring partners, uh, uh, the perfect time, the per What is the story Andy Ruiz is telling himself here? Yeah, but also, do you notice that he looks towards Joshua as well? So now, people, what we've got is a behavioural cluster. Yeah, we've got two things. Biology does not lie. We've got one where they're talking about the sparring partner. As he licks the inside of his cheek, we've got self-soothing. Immediately, he looks across, uh, across towards Anthony Joshua. 
That would indicate to me, again, just on this, which is an assumption, that does he think that he's had the correct spar and fall because he's self-soothing the threat, which is Anthony Joshua? I don't know, but I would definitely dig that a little bit deeper. So again, Andy Ruiz is trained as talk, and I'll show you the clip. Just observe what you see. This is the key. Often we see things, but what do we observe? We're not very good at looking at the bigger picture, all right? You see things, but you don't observe things. They're two very different skill sets. I'll show you the clip. Observe what's going on. Perfect uh, time to prepare, to develop a, a better game plan, and to understand that we have a, a very tough task in front of us with Anthony Joshua. We respect him a, a great deal. So did you see that? Lip compression. Mm. A, a very tough task in front of us with Anthony Joshua. We Again, this is not my opinion. This is a globally recognized generic behavioral pattern there. So when he does lip compression, and he's talking about the fight and how hard it's going to be, talking about Anthony Joshua specifically, Andy Ruiz, it's almost as if he wants to say something, but he's not. At that particular time, I wonder what that story is. What is he telling himself that it's got enough energy that he's actually got to stop it? Again, so hopefully you're getting the groove now of observing what's going on. Here's another clip. Let's see what you can observe. He camp once again is mentally and physically prepared for the challenge and and you know we we look forward to it so again thank you thank you and see that his trainer talks about he's mentally and physically prepared for the challenge and at that particular moment not five seconds before not five seconds after at that particular moment as soon as he said it andy Ruiz scratches his face for the challenge and and you know we we look forward to it so he's not quite sure and again in the context you'd expect that yeah, have I left any stone unturned? Have I prepared correctly? But also he's probably thinking, hey, brother trainer, it's not you going up against this monster in there, it's me. Now this is an interesting one where Anthony Joshua is talking about how he's reframed. He's, he's talk, uh, I mentioned on my video about performance anxiety, the link is below if you, if you want to watch that one, about Anthony Joshua's performance anxiety and also how Andy Ruiz could be affected by performance anxiety. But what he's done is we talk about reframing, looking through a different lens at a situation. And what you hear is, and, uh, sorry, is Anthony Joshua talking about, it's called Back to 16. Into existence, this is the challenge of mindset. So I call it Back to 16, Back to my 16th fight. Hungry, determined, to focus on the goal. He's actually powerfully, now this is, this is a point again, and I don't know if you've picked up on this, but when you label something, when you give something a title, that's powerful stuff, brothers and sisters. It's a name, it's a thing. And he's called it back to 16, when he was hungry at the 16th fight, when he was the challenger, when he was trying to climb the mountain. But the fact that he's named it and give it a title, that's a powerful affirmation coming from the inside of Anthony Joshua's head there. Okay, now this is just so subtle. Many people wouldn't have seen this, but I'm going to show you a little clip where Eddie Hearn says something about, you know, winning the World Championship belts back, etc. And then Anthony Joshua does something that's so important, yet probably a lot of people have missed it. Didn't have as the champion with all those defences under the table. I've been boxing a while now. Did you see that? The... That sharp intake, and I want a firm intake of breath, not, whew, I'm relaxed, uh, an intake of breath to get the body primed, all right? So when he's talking about the pressure and having the belts there, that intake of breath would tell me, because it's an intake, not an exhalation, that actually there was some pressure with the belts. He wasn't that comfortable. He was aware of everything that was being burdened on his shoulders. And that little, that, that subtle, subtle thing that tells you that, God, I'm good. And I love this little bit. We have got, we have got a bit of Conor McGregor yeah, entering Saudi Arabia. Here. And um, when I come into boxing, I didn't really come to kind of take part. I came to take over. Yeah, we're not here to take part. We are here to take over. Love it. This is also an interesting clip as well. I'm going to play it and just see what you can observe. Like, even looking at that board up there, I fought Melina, Vivekin, Ruiz, Dylan. Yeah, now when we are faced with a threat, any type of threat, our vision tends to come in onto the threat. We tend to be tunnel focused, yeah, tunnel vision. That we start, you stop seeing that peripheral vision and everything else comes down here. But you can see that when Joshua's talking, he starts pointing to somewhere that's not in front. Remember all the press are there, the cameras, etc. He's that calm within himself that he's taking in the full surrounding. Now again, to the untrained eye, that may not mean anything. But that just gives you an indication 
that he's available, cerebrally available, spiritually available, to take in the whole of the event that's going on there, that's a good indication that he at that particular time, and again, I can only comment on that particular time, is comfortable within himself. He's comfortable with the task at hand. Again, just a quick clip when the two fighters were coming together, watch what Joshua does here. What he's doing there is called ventral fronting. Yeah, he's exposing the chest and the major organs out there. I feel no fear. This is what I'm prepared to expose. Interestingly, when he turns around and he sees Andy Ruiz coming, he starts swinging the arms, yeah? In that particular moment, he's in the fight. He knows what's coming. Anthony Joshua is actually ready to go right there, right now. That's why he's pumping his arms. It's a bit like when people start shadow boxing. And again, guys, the majority of guys will, will understand this. Some girls will be. But when you're in the pub and you, you're sort of player fighting with a little bit of spite about you, you start shadow boxing in front of somebody. Yeah, hey, yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah, because there's that little bit of mean intention, although you're giving that false sense of sort of joking us off underneath it, there is that, if you start, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm going to meet you in the middle. That's what we see here, Anthony Joshua is getting ready to go. But the last clip that I'd like to show you is really interesting, really interesting, so I'll play it and then let's discuss it. Yeah, you hear this now. What I want to do is reflect on the gloves are off um, video, the body language assessment that I've done. Again, the link is below and you can see what I'm talking about here. So in the crowd that you've got, and I've put some subtitles on there, you've got somebody shouting, you know, two time, as in Anthony Joshua is going to be a two time world champion. Now, on the gloves are off, what Anthony Joshua did when asked by, uh, sorry, when Johnny Nelson was asking Andy Ruiz, did Anthony Joshua quit? You will notice that Anthony Joshua stares directly at Johnny Nelson, even though the question is coming from, uh, the answer, sorry, is coming from Andy Ruiz, the threat. And then he does it again about, you know, are you going to take this man's title? Are you going to end his career? Anthony Joshua directly looks at Johnny Nelson instead of looking at what the threat's coming from. Now what's really beautiful here is when the two of them are looking so they're actually directly looking at each other here. The most threatening position that you can get eye to eye contact. You do that, you look at someone, they look at you, they're looking eyes straight away, generally you look away because there's a threat there. These two fighters, these warriors are eye to eye in the most, you know, aggressive position you can without fighting, face to face, eye to eye, someone shouted, you know, two time, and Andy Ruiz does not bat an eyelid, and what he says is, and still. Uh, he doesn't even look away, he is staring Anthony Joshua in the face, whilst affirming, and still. God, I'm getting worked up here. My body language. Like, that is such a powerful affirmation. To not be turning around and answering the person, which a lot of people would do. To break that eye contact, to break that, you know, uncomfortable situation by looking your foe in the eyes and look away. You know, there's a majority of people would take any opportunity, any opportunity to, to look away, to break that uncomfortable feeling. Not Andy Ruiz in, in this particular case. He looks at Anthony Joshua, answering to the bloke across there, says, and still. But putting it all together, what does it mean? Oh, brothers and sisters. We have got to fight the hand. Two confident individuals who, in the context of what has just gone on there, have displayed things that you would expect would have given little bits away. That they are worried, they, you know, there's stuff going on, normal thoughts that they would have. Nothing massive that you think, oh, someone's at a disadvantage to the other one. Who do I think's going to win? I have got no idea. I am just buzzing for a fight. Who do I want to win? Obviously, Anthony Joshua's got the UK connection. He's come up, you know, he's come up through the ranks. He's paid his dues. He's got it. He's achieved something. He's been beat. He's trying to build himself back up. I want him to win. But then you've got Andy Ruiz. I also want Andy Ruiz to win as well. You know, the short, fat guy who's been given loads of stick. You know, he's not a boxer. He doesn't look like a boxer. And now he's got the belt. It really is a 50-50 fight, but the real winner is going to be boxing fans. Like, honestly, Saturday, I, I'm, I live for boxing. Saturday cannot come quick enough for me. I might even do a record. I might even do a live stream. 
I don't, I don't know if the camera and the microphone can take the enthusiasm though. So hopefully you've enjoyed what I've done. Please subscribe below, give us a thumbs up, but most importantly, comment below. I love having the crack. Give me your opinions. Tell me what you're picking up on as well. That would be fantastic to hear. Also, please connect with me on Instagram and Twitter. That's generally where I respond to the messages. I'm trying to get some type of structure where I can respond to everybody who's contacted me. Thanks very much for your time and your attention. Believe in Bruce. Let's get ready to rumble!